Welcome to Ravens Over. Please go to my channel, also hit the notification bell, like this video, and share. We lost one of our sisters to the coronavirus. Her name was Lorena Borges. She was only 59 years old. I want to share the story about her life and living and what happened to her. Welcome to Ravens Over. Hey! What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. Her name was Lorena Borges. Now, she was born May the 29th, 1960. She died March the 30th, 2020. This is this month. And the state of that was a Mexican-American transgender immigrant rights activist known as the mother of the transgender Latinx community in Queens, New York. Her work on behalf of immigrant and transgender community gathered recognition throughout New York City and the United States. And it's also stated in her words, I don't like injustice. I saw so much injustice like the police arresting our friends walking in the streets, women that lived in our neighborhood, they were deported instantly. Nobody hears of them or sees them. We are immigrants. One day I said, no, Lorena Burgess will take care of those women who don't have a voice or vote. I have the power to rally people. Lorena Burgess, trans, Latina activist. And I want to share this story with you about her life and living and how she ended up with the coronavirus that's over the epidemic that's taken over this world. Lorena Barges has died from the coronavirus. The transgender Latinx has died from the corona. Now it's stating that Lorena, a community health center educator called the mother of trans Latinx community in Queens, has described to be a victim of the coronavirus on Monday morning, according to the Queen's Eagle. Now, Lorena moved to the United States when she was 21 years old, and he, she helped to run the HIV testing programs and transgender sex workers, as well as syringe exchange programs for transgender women taking hormones injection. Now, Lorena was one of the 61 New Yorker pardoned in New York City Governor Andrew Cuomo in 2018. She had been convicted of four-degree criminal um Back in 1991, she had gone on to become an important community activist after serving her sentence. Now, it is stating that it is very sad to wake up this morning to know that one of our trans rights activists in New York City has lost their battle to the coronavirus. I am speechless. And Lorena, thank you for everything you did for the community, for the impact you have had on the lives of so many, including myself. And it's also another site that stated that New York City LGBTQ community is mourning the loss of 60-year-old Lorena as well, recognized activist, social worker, and trans experience for those decade activists for marginalized and oppressed communities and found around Queens. Lorena died on Monday morning after having con contracted the coronavirus and it stated that Lorena began her work back in the mid-90s and focused on helping trans women live with HIV and AIDS as as well as sex worker. She created an activist advocacy platform, the Lorena um, Community Fund, back in 2008. Just a few weeks ago, Lorena had also lost a fundraiser on behalf of the LGBT Center into cultural collective of trans people affected with the pan pandemic. Now, Lorena saved so many lives in the state um, violence, neglect, and abuse, and she fought tirelessly for trans immigrant people with living with HIV and sex worker. Now, the transgender law sent the road that she should still be with us. Lorena worked closely with the transgender law center back in 2018. She was pardoned by the New York City Governor Cuomo, noted unwavering commitment as far as the LGBTQ community throughout her years of dedicating service. Despite our own struggles and survival of human trafficking, including being Criminalized for it, Lorena also immediately upon setting to New York City, generously helping other immigrant women and invited them to stay with her. She remains, she remembered that she shared a tiny apartment back up in, she said a tiny apartment with up to 20 transgender women, all of them sex worker living to survive in neighborhoods that were marginalized. Now, it also stated that Lorena crossed into the Mexico-U.S. border back in 1981 in search of what wasn't accessible to her, accessible to her back home, 
healthy transition under the supervision of a um, physician. Years prior to, she lived on the streets of Mexico City. Lorena spent the rest of her life fighting for trans women and as well as other LGBTQ communities while in New York was a physical epic center of her work. Lorena labored positively impacted marginalized people throughout the U.S. There are two short documentaries that come with Lorraine's spirit in her storyline. And very powerful woman. And I want to share this video with you that I found about her and her life and living all the work she's done and, and fighting for us as well. Um, check this out. Quiero empezar diciendo mi nombre es Lorena Bornaz y bueno la razón que yo llegué a este país eh, estaba muy joven tenía 20 años y realmente no tenía un futuro en México eh, en ese momento me identificaba como un chico gay pero mis pensamientos principales era tener un médico supervisado en hormonas para hacer mi transición eh, supervisada por un doctor. Yo llegué aquí en el año de 1981, cuando yo tenía 20 años. Bueno, llegué con la mente de hacer mi transición de hombre a mujer. Eh, la, la hice, eh, pero no tenía documentos legales. Eh, fue en el año del 86 cuando yo pude tener mis documentos por el presidente Ronald Reagan bajo una amnistía. I supported this bill. I believe in the idea of amnesty for those who have put down. podría decir que fue para el 90 para el año 1990 yo ya, te, ya era residente permanente de los Estados Unidos pero fue en ese mismo año cuando mi vida dio un giro un giro que pues esperaba lo que pasó eh, tuve unas convicciones eh, las convicciones no me permitieron hacer mi renovar mi residencia permanente ni tampoco hacerme ciudadana de los Estados Unidos. So, estas convicciones, eh, una era este arresto de prostitución y algunas eh, convicciones eh, eh, por asuntos de tráfico. Bueno, no eran asuntos de tráfico, pero en ese momento me dieron esa acusación. So, mi vida se me, se me hizo un paro en ese momento, pero igualmente yo seguí trabajando hasta en el año de 1995 que decidí yo emprender un camino como activista, eh, cambiar todos eh, algunos sistemas de la policía y realicé mi primera marcha trans ya como trans, ya como mujer, ya identificada como mujer. I was the founder of the Queen's Pride Parade, and I know how difficult it is to organize LGBT people sometimes. Uh, and Lorena actually went out and organized the transgender community. And sometimes our transgender uh, folks don't even have the self-esteem to think that they're worth organizing and fighting for their own rights. But Lorena gave them that dignity. She went out and said to them, no, you're valuable, you're worth something, and we're going to fight for our rights together. And so that's why I really admire Lorena, because she has done a tremendous job organizing the transgender community. All the while, she was having these other things go on in her life. So despite everything else that was happening in her life, the record that she had, the struggles that she had for her own life, she was still out there trying to help other people. And that's something I think everybody can admire. Y entonces la misión mía me llevó a tener un grupo que ahora somos 479 mujeres trans eh, registradas en mi organización. 
pero mi enfoque sí empezó ayudando a las mujeres trans que viven con VIH SIDA y siendo arrestadas. To me, it was a matter of justice to get Lorena justice. I felt that um, the um, conviction that she had on her record um, should not disqualify her from being an active member uh, and an active resident uh, here in the United States of America. Daniel Trump, eh, lo conocí en una protesta en el 2000, en el año 2000. Eh, Daniel le interesó mucho trabajo. Daniel, a través de los años, se hizo mi best friend. Daniel Trump, ahora es mi best friend. Daniel lo conocí en el 2000, como dije. Él se hizo mi mejor amigo. Y él me dijo, Lorena, don't worry about it. You do the best job in New York City. And I'm here for you. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to be with you for all, all the time. Lo estoy diciendo en inglés. Eso es lo que él me dijo en inglés. Y yo le dije, Daniel, thank you. En la presidencia, entonces, We have, uh, tenemos una amistad por casi 20 años, 18 años. Eh, Daniel Trump me presentó, he introduced me to Melinda. He introduced me to the gobernador Como. He introduced me a lot of people in the community. Well, I wanted to honor her at the Queensboro President's um, annual LGBT event in Borough Hall for the work that she's done in the LGBT, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community here in Queens. That's really something important to me. A través de mis años, eh, yo he sido reconocida por el alcalde de Nueva York, David Dinkins. Eh, yo he sido reconocida por Leticia, la defensora del pueblo. Yo he sido reconocida por el presidente del condado de Queens. Yo tengo una, un total de cinco proclamas que me ha dado el estado de Nueva York. Soy el gobernador como, eh, al parecer, vio todo mi trabajo comunitario y el diciembre 26, él me hizo una llamada por teléfono. Y cuando me hizo la llamada por teléfono, eh, yo me puse, me asusté, eh, porque yo estaba esperando ya esa llamada. Yo ya esperaba que esa llamada llegara. Entonces la llamada era, fue que me dice Lorena, congratulations, me dijo, yo tomé tu caso y yo he visto que tú has hecho... All I can say is rest in peace, my sister, rest in peace. Even to her dying day, she was still trying to fight for the trans community girls and basically trying to get them to live the life and get more self-esteem, to feel more sure about themselves, let them know that they needed to be here, that they are loved. So thank you, Lorena. Thank you for everything you've done. Unfortunately, this timely death has taken her away from us. So the family in my prayers. And like I said before, it is so hard to be a person out here in the forefront fighting for people and then it go unrecognized. People don't even know the struggles and stuff you've been through. Sometimes you have to die in order to live. She took girls into a small apartment trying to help them and she did it. She's a true leader, a true activist and a true woman within her own right. And it's hard, but we lost her to this disease, coronavirus. And unfortunately, we lost our sister. So I can say, rest in peace, my sister, rest in peace. Share this video every way you can. At least in her death, we can let everybody know that we had a beautiful soul out here among us. We suffered a great loss. Subscribe to my channel. 
comment below. Let me know how you feel about this video. At the top, there's the Instagram button. You follow me, I'll follow you back. Let you, I love you. And thank you for watching. Kiss the Reeve.